Given your deep experience both in monetary policy making and in the banking sector, put the events of this weekend in context and when do you think we can breathe a sigh of relief? <laughs> Well, I hope this week we can <clears throat> breathe a sigh of relief. Um, UBS's uh, announcement of the acquisition of Credit Suisse is certainly going to ca should calm the fears of a global banking crisis. Uh, what I'll be watching this week is whether there are more pressures on the liquidity of mid-sized and regional banks in the United States that would conceivably keep this, uh, I'll call it a mini-crisis, uh, brewing for the next few days. So that's, I think, going to be my focus, but the, it's a good announcement over the weekend. Dennis, uh, the, of course, this now gets us right to Wednesday when the Federal Reserve announces its decision on rates. What, two, three weeks ago, Jay Powell signaled the, the possibility, if not probability, of a 50 basis point hike. Some are saying they'll do 25. Some say, some they say they shouldn't move at all amidst all this financial uncertainty. Uh, what do you think they will do and what should they do? I think that the options have, have narrowed to two options. One is a 25 basis point hike, effectively staying the course in attacking inflation. And the other is a tactical pause. I call it tactical because I don't think it should be interpreted as uh, somehow withdrawing from the inflation fight. Rather, it should be interpreted as not adding any fuel to whatever they see as a financial stability risk. And so I think those are the two options. It, I think it's a very tough call, frankly, partly because we don't know what the internal assessment of, of the financial stability concerns really looks like going into the week. Mm -hmm. At this stage, I, I am inclined to give a majority probability to a 25 basis point hike but a non-trivial probability to a pause. And I re really, it's a, for me, it's a very tough call before the meeting. Uh, Nomura last week uh, suggested that the Fed uh, not only would cut their rate, seems even less probable now, but they did raise the possibility of uh, quasiing the pausing such a quantitative tightening. Well, I had trouble getting that out, didn't I? Maybe because it seems like such a, a big step to take uh, because they think that's removing liquidity when liquidity is needed right now. Uh, would, do you think they'll harbor that possibility? Do you think it, would it make sense to do that? Well, I think it's one of their options, and I can see a logic in simply pausing quantitative tightening because it's so widely viewed as removing liquidity from, from the financial system overall at a time in which liquidity of individual banks is a big issue. So, you know, it would, it would be sort of a symbolic move in some respects. I don't think 90 billion a month is going to make a difference greatly one way or another to the liquidity of the banking system. But I do think it would be consistent with trying to do something to help restore stability. Dennis, all of this came about as an unintended consequence of the fight against inflation. Is there a way that this could have been avoided in the way that the Fed and other central banks navigated that battle? Well, I think you have to go back and, and uh, accept that the Fed misread the inflation risk for quite some time and then pivoted in March of last year and raised rates very, very rapidly, uh, perhaps if taking some bank management teams a little bit by surprise. And so it might have been avoided if the inflation fight had started earlier, it had gone more gradually, and, and even though it was extremely well telegraphed and signaled by the Fed, Perhaps they could have done even more to prepare the banking system for a rise in the policy rate and therefore the interest rate levels. So then is how will Chair Powell have to navigate communication this week? Because, of course, we know that just a few days ago he had actually put more tightening on the table. And this is also coming when people around are saying that this is not the right time to blink, that this could actually make things much worse if he actually does not go ahead with what markets are expecting already. 
he he always has a tough communication challenge. I think he performs extraordinarily well in meeting that challenge. This week is a particularly tough one to navigate because essentially the Fed has two fights on its hands. It has the inflation fight, which has been ongoing for, for many months now, and it has this new financial stability set of concerns, and he cannot uh, favor one over the other. He's sort of got to make sure that he uh, is uh, constructive in trying to deal with both at the same time. And I, I just think, and, and to some extent, um, you know, they, they are opposed. And so I, I, I think it's a tough communication challenge he faces. Okay, uh, Dennis, I'd like to get another very quick question. I know my Heidi would as well. So uh, just quickly, did regulators make big mistakes with Silicon Valley Bank? Uh, Powell's being criticized. They're being dragged over the coals verbally on TV. Did they make mistakes? I don't know the details. I, I, nobody has disclosed yet sort of what the cadence of communication between the regulators, supervisors, and the bank management was leading up to this crisis. Um, Certainly, I think some aspects of the regulatory approach have to be revisited and rethought, but I think we'll wait to hear uh, basically line and verse actually what happened and what the regulators had been communicating. What do you see in the differences in, in banking crises past, right? 1972, 1984, and some of those lessons learned, because is there a fundamental juncture at this point where you ask, is the Fed's ultimate pursu pursuit of financial stability, is it a bigger risk when it comes to inflation or is it a bigger risk to that coming from the banking system? Uh, I'm not sure I totally understand your question, but the first of all, I think if the banking system becomes very cautious, which is f fairly likely, I think, if, particularly if uh, this pressure um, continues, then that is likely to lead to a softer economy and therefore actually will help in the short term the Fed's effort to slow the economy. The real risk is if it persists and there's contagion and it becomes a much more severe downturn than was ever uh, expected or ever intended, that would, uh, you know, th that would be an undesirable outcome. So you have the a little bit of the unusual situation that, if this is containable and it's just an episode and and it creates a little bit more caution on the part of banks, not necessarily a bad thing for what the Fed is trying to engineer. But if it gets out of hand, it's clearly a bad thing. So uh, again, that's the communication navigation that. Powell is going to have to uh, uh, undertake uh, on Wednesday afternoon.